and uh, and we are live now. So first of all, I want to thank you so much for um, joining me here, Hetty. Um, it's first of all, we talk every morning. But it's one thing just to have you here all to myself and I don't have to share you with Mark and Terrence and all 45 other people. So I feel special that you're here. <laughs> Thank you. I feel special being here. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. And um, just uh, as we go live here, just make sure your volume is up just a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. I can hear you better now. Wonderful. So, hey, Queen, how are you doing? I'm well, Queen. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm good. I feel refreshed. I'm hydrated. Um, my lashes are on, so I'm all right. <laughs> They're beautiful. They're beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, with that being said, first of all, um, when we talk to you every morning, on the Mark Coley Business Academy, the 6 a.m. call, you're always just blessing us or sharing your wisdom and knowledge. And it's always something profound with you. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get her on the podcast. I got to get her on the show. And you just gladly accepted. And I was so like, oh, cool. So I'm just, I'm super excited just to have you here. Um, hey, Cheryl, Cheryl from the 6 a.m. call is joining us and those that are tuning in. Um, thank you so much. So first of all, you just had vacation was at Myrtle Beach. Yes, I did. So how was that? It was awesome. It was actually a destination wedding. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, counseling a couple for about four months, and then they chose to get married on the beach, and it was just beautiful. So we combined that with a much-needed vacation, and the waters were beautiful. Good. You know, actually, Myrtle Beach is on my things to do list. <laughs> You'll love it there. Awesome. Awesome. So we're gonna um welcome some people in, and we're gonna kick everything off. So that being said, shout out to everyone tuning in. Uh, there on Instagram. I'm hi Tiffany. Hey cousin, how are you doing? And everyone tuning in here on uh, YouTube, Twitch, and uh, Facebook Live. Um, my name is Camille Essek. I'm host of the Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast where innovators and creators connect. Be sure to hit that notification button and bring a friend and tune in. Share, comment, post. If you have a question, drop in the comments below and we will connect with you. Um, and if you haven't heard, I'm also the creator of Chemistry Room Fragrances. So be able to follow that. Um, if you want items, follow me there on Instagram at Chemistry Room Fragrances and on uh, Instagram at Camille.Essek. I have ebooks available as well as my room sprays. And if you want to catch up on previous podcasts, I'm on YouTube. You can subscribe there, catch previous episodes. I'm on YouTube, uh, Instagram. I'm on iHeartRadio, Spotify. We just got picked up by Pandora. I'm excited about that. So I'm just, I'm just excited about the platforms uh, we're just being blessed with there. Um, and to Skyla, thank you for joining me. Um, Thank you, thank you for joining me, Skylar. She is from Twitch. So I'm so glad you decided to drop, drop in. Michael, hey, Michael from the 6 a.m. call. So everyone, please share and, and drop a comment below. So Hetty, those that are not familiar with you, uh, <laughs> hey, Diamond, let everyone know who you are and what you do and where you're from. My name is Hetty J. Simmons. I am a poet who was given the gift through Dreaming the Events of 911. And I am originally from Georgetown, South Carolina, uh, but I live here in Atlanta for the past 33 years. Oh, wow, wow. Well. And what brought you to that area? To Atlanta? Yes. Oh, interesting. It was, to be honest, um, it was a failed suicide attempt, um, trying to end my life and okay. uh, going through a lot of different things at the after losing my mom for about maybe three years after that going mm -hmm. to college, not feeling loved and just wanting to end my life. And I had planned wow. it all and, and the Lord actually intervened. And because of his intervention, when I asked, where can I live? Where do I go? Because mm -hmm. I did not want to return to South Carolina mm -hmm. and to Georgia, because I have work for you to do. Wow. You know what, I'm, 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 first of all, thank you for being transparent and honest about that. And one of the things about um, my podcast is particularly within the black community, mental health is something that is not discussed. And I'm a PK growing up in church. So mental health was taboo and everything was like, you know, what goes on this house, stay in this house. 
And I can relate to that because my grandmother died of um, breast cancer when I was 23. And I was at a point in my life where I felt like nobody loved me. I felt like she was the only person that saw me and loved me and really paid attention to me. And she would talk to me. And when my grandmother died, it rocked my world. And uh, I was at, um, just left MTSU. I was just in a very hard place. And, you know, at that time I was the president of the chapter of my sorority doing all this stuff, but inside I was broken. And I just got to a point where I didn't want to be here anymore. I remember taking a bunch of pills and I just laid down because I just didn't want to feel hurt anymore. I just didn't want to feel that ache anymore. And I was like, well, if I just go to sleep, I'll be fine. But I took so many pills because I was just like wanting to be in a deep sleep and just tap out and escape. And then I woke up the next morning, um, hugging the toilet, just throwing up all the pills. And that's when I remember, it just came to my mind, like you could have died. And it was like, at first I didn't care, but when I realized the gravity of my decision, it scared me. And I started, I was in the bathroom just crying. And it was at that point that my life began to take a, a total change because it's like, sometimes in the moment it can see, seem so big that um, we feel like this is the way out, not knowing that what I was doing, it would have known everything God had for me waiting on the other side, whether it was, you know, completing school, joining the military, traveling, meeting awesome people like you. Like I was so fixated on the, 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 the bad, the, the, the heart, the ache of the current moment. I couldn't see the promise God had waiting for me. And I think those things talking about it, it, it takes away the power, but it shows people in all those other spaces, like, um, you're not by yourself, but th you have options. And I think sometimes the enemy will try to make you seem like you don't have options, but you do, but you have to see past this moment right here and look beyond that and know that you have a, I have a hope and a future and that God's hand is on your life. And at that point, um, God, you know, brought somebody into my life and she became like, um, a big sister to me. And she really just poured into me and just, you know, her and through God just breathed life back into me. And it was a beautiful, it was, I would say this was an ugly process, but the end result was beautiful. Yes. I, I can identify with your story because I did the same thing for me. It was a handful of pills. And when I laid back, I said that my roommates are going to find me dead. And I thought it was the perfect setting. And the moment I laid my head back, I literally heard this rumbling voice going, ha ha, I got you. And then it was like, you're going straight to hell. And I jumped up and said, Lord, save me. Mm -hmm. Knowing I was already saved. I knew who he was. But because I felt traumatized and alone, I did not want to live. And wow. the enemy will come in like that. He will come in knowing your future already, knowing that, you know, most people who, all people, I believe, who try to commit suicide, and unfortunately, I hate those who fail, it's like they are a threat to the enemy's kingdom. He knows it more than we do because we're in such a state that we don't think we're loved and we're important. So the enemy comes in at that age and he comes against the very thing that God has called you to be within the realm of the earth to help others. So mm -hmm. I, I know the feeling, but it was, it's like the Lord came in as a voice through a brick wall and said, I'll be your mother, your father, and I'll never leave you. And it was just so peaceful. It was like that light grabbed me and laid me down. I slept for 12 hours and mm -hmm. I was remembering I'm supposed to be dead. And I wasn't, and I remembered everything. So I'm, I'm so happy that neither you or I were successful because none of this would happen and we wouldn't be able to touch the lives that the Lord is allowing us to touch. That's, um, yeah, that's so true. And that kind of goes into um, the conversation as far as the alignment of self and dealing with trauma, because it wasn't just, you know, my grandmother dying. It was a culmination of things that had happened throughout my childhood that led to that point. And we don't deal with it. We don't pack it. We don't unpack it. We don't talk about it. So, Hattie, can you kind of touch on um, the pros and cons of dealing and not dealing with trauma? Well, the cons for the most part is you're just not able to live, period. You're holding on to something which not only affects you in a in a emotional state, your physical state as well, it will affect your health. You know, blood pressure can be increased. And sometimes it all it always goes down to being unforgiven or unforgiving yourself. 
And in that state, when you're holding on to these things, it can cause like cancer within the body. And I'm a nurse as well. And I've, I've been able to see what, what happens to people on the physical side and the emotional side when they just hold on to things. It's almost like um, a water hose. You open the water hose and it's flowing. But then when you, when you hold on to these things, there's constrictions. And then our bodies will react to things that happens in the physical state that will cause disease and high blood pressure and cancer and memory loss. And then the trauma that comes in on that side causes us not to be able to even know who we are because we're so sick. But the con, the best part about the trauma itself is when you're able to forgive. And that water hose all of a sudden, you know, it's constricted, but all of a sudden it opens up. Mm -hmm. And then things are able to flow. And I like doing this because the opening up caused love to come in. You mm -hmm. begin to love on yourself. You begin to think. You begin to let go. And sometimes when things are happening, when trauma happens to you, it's not that you don't want to forgive or you don't want to see the person again. It mm -hmm. starts with you forgiving and letting go and then forgiving yourself. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we'll forgive, but we just won't let go of things that, we, that weren't even our fault. Like I forgive myself for holding on, you know, mm -hmm. when you start thinking in that type of connotation, it's like you become even more free to open up, to do the things that you were called to do in the first place. I think one of the things, um, just you touched on forgive, forgiving yourself. I think a lot of times we're so focused on forgiving the offender, but then sometimes we also become the prisoner and the warding to our own spirit, our own heart, because we beat ourselves up over the choices that we made. And even though we may have a release the other person, but what are your thoughts about digging deeper into the point of releasing yourself? I think it's, it's to the point of when you forgive the offender, it let it frees you, but it starts on the outside. Mm -hmm. And then you have layers of forgiveness. You know, you forgive the person who offended you and then you, you can look at them, but you, then you can't talk about it. But when you really let go of all of the offenses, you're able to talk about it. You're able to say, yes, you may have hurt me, and then you may not ever forgive me, but that's okay. I am free. And when you forgive yourself on that, on that deeper level, you're able to talk. It's like peeling an onion. Literally, it's like peeling an onion. You start with your mouth, you confess it, and then that confession goes into your heart, and then you start living it and breathing it and eating it. You've forgiven the person, then they may not even want to forgive you, but that's okay. But then you forgive yourself. Okay, I've let you go. And even though you don't want to let me go and me letting you go, I'm free. I'm totally free. And then with that unforgiveness, that when in the letting go, there's there are deeper roots of something. Something always starts from a seed, you know, like the offense could have been for me, it was like being hit in the head. And then for me, it caused like migraine headaches and seizures. But when I completely let all of that go, I was healed. And then the healing, I was able to talk about it. And then I was able to share it. So the forgiving yourself allows you to not only share, but free others in the process as you're still being healed. Mm -hmm. um, so as you were talking, I started thinking about the healing process. And in that process, um, we hear things, whether it's said to, uh, by other people to us and the things um, they speak um, to us growing up or situations, even if they don't say it, it's an, it's an unspoken word that's placed on us um, or project, projected. That's the word I'm looking for. So a combination of all of these things, it formulates what we call the internal voice. Right. And so even though we have you know what God has said, but because of situations and actions from people and then that can um, impact or influence how we think about ourselves. Now, another voice has been created. And I say all the time, it's like if we're friends and if you're going through something, oh, Hetty, you can make it. You can do it. I'm encouraging. I'm pushing you up. I, I'm, I'm supporting you. I'm pushing you. But then my voice to myself, oh, you're stupid. Or I can't believe you did that. Now, if I wouldn't say those things to you, why would I say that stuff to myself? 
and the same grace, the same kindness, the same encouragement, the same support. I must, I must first extend that to myself before I can extend it to others. It's like, it's like a tape recorder. You have to ask yourself, like, who told you that? Why do you believe that? And we have to unpack that, that voice. So can you kind of touch on the power of speech and the alignment of self in terms of your internal voice heading? Well, the power of speech, you know, we all, we all hear the, the, we know the scripture, Proverbs 18, 21, like death and life are in, is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And those who love it may eat of it. When you can align yourself with truth, you know, the, the greatest commandment that God says that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And forgiving and being aligned allows you to know who you are. It allows you to sit with the Lord. And it's like, he'll show you things. And when I say sit, I mean like having a conversation, however, whatever that relationship is like with however you talk to the Lord. I call him daddy, you know, and I'll say, what's up, pop? Or when I'm upset, I'm like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? I just talk to him like he's a person. That opens up the alignment. When you mm -hmm. go to him, he says, if you lack the wisdom or the understanding, he says, ask. And it's freely given. He, he gives us no condition other than trusting and believing in him. And aligning yourself in the physical, where his spirit lives within your belly, aligning that up with him because he's spirit, his spirit to your spirit. And then mm -hmm. it's like there's an activation that helps you in the moments when you don't feel good or you don't even feel loved. But speaking over yourself is something that we don't do. We don't do. I had to do that today. I had to just mm -hmm. lay down because I felt like, oh, you're not worthy. You can't do this. And I just began to just rest in the Lord, you know, because anytime I go to him, he never leaves me in that same space. So alignment to me is putting myself in a place and a space where I can talk to my daddy, talk to my father and let him tell me what needs to be done. And it could be something as simple as just laying your head down because we want to thank God. It's like, woo, wah, wah, wah. It's not always a shebang bang. It's, he comes in that still small voice and yeah. speaks to us. And that's alignment for me, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. It really does. So I think in the process of the healing and, and the realignment of the voice and the eternal uh, mindset, um, you begin to recognize some things that are not healthy or um, even toxic. And, and then a separation comes as far as maybe with certain people uh, you used to hang around or talk to, environments. And um, that process can cause some friction. And I think at the point, at least for me, learning how to be unapologetic about who I am and showing up as the person I'm supposed to be. And I think that's very important for us. I don't want to say to be, to be selfish, but to have a, a greater sense of priority about your wellness and advocating for your peace and your, and your mental state of mind and your wholeness, because no one else is going to do it as long as um, people take and you let them, they're going to get all they can get. And when they tap you dry, they're going to move on. So you have to be able to learn to guard space, guard this, you know, and, and learn how to advocate for yourself. So what are your thoughts on that? Yes, I, I agree. Something you said about, you know, you, you start hearing other voices. You, you do. When you're about to break through, especially when it comes to forgiving and forgiving others as well as yourself, mm -hmm. you start hearing voices even more because the enemy literally, he does not want to let you go. He refuses. He wants you to remind you of where you came from. And you always hear, oh, you can't do that. That's not for you. But on the other hand, God has said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So when you're taking the time out to spend time with him, that it, it allows you to know which voice that you are to listen to. And the more you listen to what God is saying to you, the more you drown out the voice of the enemy. Now he's always talking, sometimes not in your ear, but sometimes through those family members, literally but you have the right and the power to speak over them. Literally, you can say things like, I hear you, but you don't mean anything because you're not coming from the source of God. You have that right to do that because death in life is in the power of the tongue. It truly is. We have more power than we fail to even acknowledge. We mm -hmm. do, we really do. 
Okay. Uh, we have a comment from Instagram Live. Uh, shout out to Rakondas from the 6 a.m. call. He says, um, it's necessary to counter the opposing voice immediately. Yes, it is. I agree. That way it won't take seed and reproduce and become harder to get rid of. I agree with that, Rakondas. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. So um, you're so full of wisdom and they say life is its biggest teacher. So before you got to where you are now, what ha what was your journey like? What did that look like? Oh, wow. Um, wow. <laughs> that takes me so far back. Uh, when I was going through the abuse, there was a neighbor that lived next door. And um, I call her Mama Lil. And she would grab hold to me and just pray with me. And in her prayer, she said things that I just didn't understand. But it was her words that kept me, even though I didn't understand them. And we're looking at 40 years, almost 40 years later. And I pull from her words. So the journey for me goes back to the power of the word. When you speak something positive over someone, they will grab hold because it's a seed. It's like the spirit of you speaking, uh, which is actually in alignment with the spirit of God within you. And you put those words out, out of your mouth. And it's like the spirit just goes out. And that has kept me all throughout these years, even through my marriage. Her words just being so powerful and impactful, seeding my life. So before 9-11, I, I, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. You know, I, I had a gift, didn't understand the gifting. The poetry came to help me with the gifting, the prophetic gifting, to speak. Because when I started doing the poetry, people were like, she's rhyming, but she's talking to me, but she doesn't know who I am. It just grabbed their attention. So prior to 9-11, I felt like I was lost with a purpose. I still feel like I, I know I have a purpose now, but I can see where I'm going, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. <laughs> it does. It does. I think it's phenomenal because in you know the last um, 20 minutes we've been talking, you've discussed how you survived a suicide attempt, and then surviving abuse as a child. So when you were in that space going through the abuse, where was your mind? Like, where did you go to escape? A lot of people, I want to say they create like an, uh, an alternate reality, but mentally you go somewhere. Like your, your brain just goes on autopilot in survival mode. So where were you at that point to like your escape? Like what? how did you preserve yourself mentally through that process? My escape, there were two places I went. My mother's words, the first thing she always ever said that no matter what you're going through, you just go to God. And for me, going to God meant putting my, closing my eyes no matter what was going on and just imagining that he was holding me. And then James 1 verse 2 says, count it a joy when you go through diverse temptation, knowing that it worketh patience and it has this perfect work. And it talks about going into asking for wisdom. It made no sense to me when it said count it a joy when you go through diverse temptation. And I'm thinking this makes absolutely no sense. But I always went to praying because mom said you can go to God and then thinking about this count it a joy. So I tried to be happy because I knew God was right there with me. Mm -hmm. That was my escape place. It made no sense, but it was that's what it took for me to be happy and to endure what I was going through. The for myself, that's really good. For myself, I, I I journaled and I started journaling at like 14, 15. And I just had notebooks where I would just write. And it would just hit me and I would just write all my feelings. And some of the notebooks, you know, um, I threw away. And then, you know, you outgrow a note, notebook, you get another one. And I just found a space to write and journal and not knowing it would lead me to here. But at 14 and 15, I would write poetry and I just put it on paper because I felt like at that time, the paper wasn't going to judge me. It wasn't going to tell my feelings to anybody and it was a safe place. And so I found um, solace in, in journaling as a teenager, as a kid um, in, in the notebooks. Um, and I, I, I started experiencing depression at a young age. I was probably like 13, 14. And that led up to you know, in my 20s, you know, like I mentioned earlier, um, to age 23, 24, attempting to kill myself, not once, but twice. Uh, the second time 
I thought about running my car off the road in the rain because, you know, I could hear this voice saying, well, nobody's going to miss you anyway. And I was driving down I-24, leaving Bible class, going back to MTSU, crying because I was just that broken. And I just felt like, you know, I had nothing else going for myself. And it was just like, I don't know. It's just like it was a presence I could feel in my car and kept my card on the road until I got back to my um, off-campus apartment. And, and and it was just a very uh, vulnerable time for me. But in that time frame, I just remember just saying, God, get me out of here. I just wanted to get out of here and I didn't want to feel that anymore. And then the door opened for me a few years later to join the military. And then that's when a huge shift happened. I met Mark on deployment and it's like things just started clicking. And it was like, I don't know if you've seen people that have done CPR and it's like my spiritual lungs just started filling with air and I slowly started to like be resuscitated and breathe again. And I didn't even realize what was happening, but it, the things that happened in the previous chapter of my life, it was like, no, this is not your end. I have other things for you. Just, mm -hmm. you know, what's the saying? Um, you throw in a towel and God threw it back at me and that's exactly what happened. And people were like, oh my God, you're always so happy and so laughing and da da da, da. you're just, you know, and I'm like, yeah, because there was a time where I wasn't, you know, and so that's why now if I laugh, it may be a little louder or people are like, oh, you're a little eccentric or whatever. And it's just because I just embrace life and I know how much of a gift it is, you know? And so it's not about being bougie or over the top. It's just that I just really want to live in that moment and how you doing and just, it's just, it's just such a thing for me now. So, um, when, when there's food and I eat ice cream, mm, it's so good. I'm like, girl, you, it's just ice cream. I'm like, no, this is really good. And I think I realize how small the joys of life that we have, the little things, like NDRE says, you know, the little things, you know, YOLO, live life, join the Navy, or try food. If you don't like it, you don't have to eat it again, but try it, you know? And so I just kind of gravitated to being more um, spontaneous. And it's just like, I experienced an elevated level of life. And in that process, you know, he moved some people out of the way, but then, you know, I met Mark, then I met Whitney, then I met Jalen, then I met you guys. And it's like, you know, and then, and then it was like things I didn't know I could do, you know, gifts and things that God, Hey, you can do this. You can do hair, make my lashes, but then you can write, you can podcast, you can go to school. Like nothing's off limits for me. That's correct. And people are like, well, what, what is your next step? I don't know. But, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, if something were to happen to me, you can be like, you know, Camille, she lived, child. <laughs> like, you can't say I didn't live life. So, yeah. I love that. I really love it. You take each day as it comes because you don't know what tomorrow brings. And the only cap we have is the one we place within ourselves. Exactly. Literally, there are no limits. Angeletta says no limits. And I agree. You know, people say reach for the sky, the stars. I say reach for the galaxy. Because mm -hmm. there's so much beyond the stars that we see, you know? Yeah. So, yes. And I think it's important, too. Um, we have to learn how to be sensitive to others and step outside of ourselves. And I get it. You know, we're all pressing to be um, successful entrepreneurs and authors and podcasters and me, mine, and ours and the dog, too. But it's like, wait a minute. You know, this this thing doesn't belong to you. You know, we're all our life is 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 we're paying rent for the space we take up here on Earth. Yeah. So that means, yeah. hey, you know what? Shoot a text to Hetty and just say, hey, didn't want anything, girl. Just checking on you. Like we have to stop and just reach out and and just say hi. Are you okay today? You don't know how important that could be for a person in this situation just in that moment to say, man, you know, it's nice to be thought of. Yes, I agree. I so agree. I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm overwhelmed just to hear what you're saying because a lot of times I will just like pick up the phone. How did you know how I was feeling? I didn't. You just came across my mind. We take those moments for granted and that mm -hmm. helps others be who they are, even no matter where they are, because we're giving the love that we have on the inside of ourselves to them when you pick up that phone. And it's the action that means so much. It really does. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So Hedy, what do you think about as a creative, um, the importance of self-realization. Mm, you have to know who you are. Mm -hmm. you, you have to, you just have to know who you are. And in knowing who you are, you start to learn what you can do. 
And then that allows you to know where you're creating to or what area you're called to. You know, like I'm a poet and I get to speak on any subject, anywhere, for anything, which is unbelievable to me. So as a creative, knowing who you are, being true to yourself allows you to become a better you so you can help others as you do the things that you do. That's what I think about that. <laughs> I love it. So um, you're a wife and a mom and you have things going on in your life. So in the capacity that you serve, how do you feel like your gift has been pivotal in your role as a wife and a mother? Mm. I get to talk dirty to my husband in poetic form. <laughs> yes, nasty. <laughs> nice, nasty. <laughs> nice, nasty. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm being funny, but I'm being real. Uh, right. As as a mom, um, a mother, and a wife, you know, I get to bring healing words that come out of nowhere, no matter what the situation is. And then my children know that when I speak. They, they receive them because a lot of times it's like, oh, mom, we don't want to hear those words, but they receive who and what I do and what I am. And it just makes their life even more better because I get to be who I am and I get to help them with those words and they actually hold on to them. And when your children listen to you, oh, you done made it. You have made it. You have arrived. <laughs> you have arrived. I think you have arrived because children these days, they don't want to listen. They don't. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. So for those that may have um, kids watching, um, getting your, your child, son, daughter, whomever, to open up and talk when they are closed off, um, what would be your advice to them in, those, in that area? The first thing is to be honest with yourself. The second thing, be real with your children. Share things in your life that at certain times you know when to share and what to share that you have done coming up in your life, what has gotten you to this point. And when your children can see some of the mistakes that you have made, and then they don't, you, they see that mom and dad does not mind sharing them, it keeps the relationship open. And that, that's what I think, just being honest for, with yourself first and then your children. It keeps the doors of communication open in so many different ways because your children are really listening. And then they become a product of that environment that you created for them because you are being honest. I love it. I love it. I love it. So based on the conversation, I, I got to bring you back. You're officially a friend of the show because you are just amazing. So what are some of the takeaways or maybe two jewels or nuggets that you would want to give to those that may have been watching or tuning in? Well, it, it goes back to number one, always realize that you are not here by yourself. And what I mean with that, because you're a living entity that you may feel alone and God is always with you. I don't care what you go through. I don't care how you feel. I don't care if you think that you're not important. You are here on this earth for a reason and you did not make yourself. And it wasn't just your mommy and daddy getting together a night on one night and then you just showed up. You were here for a specific reason and God is with you. And the other thing I would say is to trust yourself. Trust yourself in being true right where you are, even when you don't know where you are, because God is with you and he will always guide you and lead you. I love it. So we, we get this every morning, but if you don't mind, can you drop a little bit of your, your poetic on us, you know, a little of the snaps? Can you give us something? Mm, I will. Um, I'm going to do something called What is Your Land? Okay. Think. Yes. What is your land? Do you know what your land is all about in you? Do you really realize that your land is exactly what you do? A preacher's land are the ears his words fall upon, words that can bring chaos or bring calm. A poet may call herself simple old poet. Her land's so soothing and she doesn't even know it. As the pen hits the paper, the words are just right. Her land is just flowing without a fight. A nurse is a nurse, but there's more to be told. Sick people aren't just sick. There's more to behold. Emotions fly high when you're stuck in a bed. The nurse's land here is getting the emotions and mental mind fed. The song says, this land is your land. This land is my land. But in reality, 
My land is not your land, only according to man. What did God grace you to do? Are you walking in it proudfully? Or are you stumbling and feeling blue? Your land is not just a piece of acquired property, but to only do what God has skillfully graced you to do. If you've never, ever seen your land, then talk to God and get his predestined plan. Again, what is your land? Is it according to God or is it according to man? I bring you peace. A whole vibe. That's what the kids say. It's a whole vibe. <laughs> I, like it. I like it. I love that. So with that being said, um, Cheryl said, speak, Miss Hetty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for gracing us with that. That was beautiful. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. And when people, where can I get more of this? Like, where can I connect with you on social media? But before you ask that question, yes. what is next for you? Um, I mean, book, what's going on? What's what's up? <laughs> well, I, I do have a book that you see in the background, Just Be You, and, and that just it stands for justified under salvation to believe and expect, especially your own uniqueness, just pieces of poetry to pour into you to let you know that you are who you are and you can trust yourself and do what it is that you've been called to do. The next thing, um, um, there's so many things in the iron where I'm like, do I want to work on the music side, you know, do pieces that with certain areas that you can just listen to and just be motivated and just meditate and just flow for your day. Um, I have other books that I'm trying to work on. I don't know what's next, to be honest with you. I just have to sit and figure out what I should be doing. That's the best way I can answer that question. I'm being honest. It, it's a lot I want to do and um, I'm getting there. I love it, I love it. <laughs> so where can people connect with you on social media? Uh, I am on Facebook. It's Hetty J. Simmons, where I write pieces um, every Monday through Friday, but kind of slacked up the last two weeks for some personal issues. And then Instagram, I'm playing around with. I haven't learned that yet, but I'm getting there. I'm definitely getting there. And that's it for right now. <laughs> I love it. Well, first of all, thank you so much for just being here and taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Um, to everyone that's been watching and tuning in here on Instagram Live, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Um, and the replay will be available on YouTube. And later on, when I release season eight for the streaming platform, it will be available there where everyone can catch the entire season eight. You can also catch this replay also on my Instagram on IGTV. So with that being said, Everyone, this is Camille as the host of the Speaker Podcast, the podcast where innovators and creators connect. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Be blessed. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.